Hi, Sally. Sorry I'm late, Horace. Oh, that's all right. I won't tell you, Father. Thank you, Horace. Oh, uh, Mrs. Miller was in to talk to you about her statement again. Oh, that Mrs. Miller. She's always worried about her bank balance. <laughs> well, I told her it's okay. Uh, Not to worry about a thing. Thanks again, Horace. That really wasn't necessary. Oh, I, I just, uh... I, I, I like to help. You're sweet, Horace. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Arnold. Uh, I should be finished the bank by the time you finish loading. Are you in a big hurry to get back to the ranch? Uh, oh, well, I'll just tag along with you then. I've got some business at the bank. Fascinating world, the world of finance, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, glad you're taking such interest, Joseph. What would you say if, uh, if I told you I was planning to make a long-term investment? I think that'd be fine, Joseph. Just fine. Sally, for the third time this week, now this is a bank. Now, banks do not make mistakes. Will you add these figures again? And this time, try and do it right. Oh, dear. Don't tell me I made a mistake again. Yes, you made a mistake again. Sally, don't you ever think... Uh, excuse me, Mr. Bristol. I, I, want, I want to explain about... Later, Horace. Now, add it down. Would you add those figures? Oh, you see, this it wasn't her fault here. I, I added that. Well, all I can say is that you are a remarkable young man, Horace. Not only do you add incorrectly, but you manage to do it in Sally's handwriting. Oh, Horace, why did you say that? I just don't like to hear anyone talk to you that way. Not even your father. But you don't have to protect me. I mean, Daddy growls a lot, but he very rarely bites. Well, I, I still don't like to hear anyone talking to you that way. <laughs> Sally? Mm hmm uh, I, I've been meaning to ask you about the dance tonight. I, I'd, I'd like to... to uh... Oh, yes, Horace, you were saying? Oh, it, it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Uh... Hi, Mr. Bristol. Oh, oh little job. Ben? Uh, George? I've been expecting you. Uh, my son has some business at the bank, too. Oh, well, lately he's turned out to be our best customer. Seems I see him every time I look up. <laughs> Any particular teller you ought to see, little girl? Oh, father. <laughs> Dinner and I asked them to go to the dance. I think we'll have a little surprise for them. From the looks on their faces just now, I feel they already know. You have a nut about the ring. Oh, Joey came. Yeah. Yesterday from San Francisco. Oh, oh it's beautiful. Oh. Uh, not as beautiful as you are. Oh, Joey, not here. Daddy might see. That's all right. Um, I want the whole world to see. You, Mr. Bristol, but we'd kind of like to get to the dance in time to hear the fiddle soon up. Ah, the impatience of youth. Oh, it isn't that at all. I told Joe I wanted us to be the first ones there. I want everybody to see my ring. You better watch it, young man. She's starting to give you orders already. Oh. The thing that worries me is I don't seem to mind it. I want you to know that I would be happy to have you as a son-in-law. Thank you, sir. Horace, 
Dance will be starting before long. Yes, I know. I brought you a little present. I couldn't help but notice that your shirts were frayed. This is one my Jimmy bought and never did wear. It'll fit you just fine. Well, thank you. Oh, I no thanks I... necessary. Well, it isn't hard to figure out what girl you're going to ask to the dance. Squire ain't the prettiest girl in town. You want to look your best. No, I didn't ask anyone. What? Work right next to Sally every day at the bank and you didn't even ask her? No. I don't even think I want to go. Oh, now, Horace, I won't listen to this kind of talk. You are too going. Oh. My Jimmy was shy, too. Of course, not for the same reasons you have. Losing your parents before you hardly knew uh, them. Please, Mrs. Oh, Cutler. my Jimmy. Uh -huh. Just thinking about talking to a girl would make him swallow his tongue and turn beet red. <laughs> but he got over it. Before the diphtheria hit him, why, he, he could just walk right up to anybody and just any time and talk to them. Bold as a brass man. You can too, Horace, if you try. Thanks for the shirt. Something? I just can't understand it. I can't either. <laughs> Sally Bristol. I declare. Hey, what you doing? Sitting all here by your lonesome, huh? Joe went to get me some punch. Hey, Sally, you don't want to just sit here and wait. Huh? <laughs> now when you can dance and wait. Uh, come on, Miss Sally. No, Let's no, go. No, huh? first, Rudy, stop me fooling. Oh, come on. Little <laughs> Joe, he ain't gonna mind, huh? Uh, Leave her on. alone. Hey, hold on there a minute, old friend. Come on, Miss Sally, dance with me. All right, Joe. Hey, this fellow's gone plumb low. All right, I know. All right, forget it. Just forget it. Go on, have a good time. Go on, please. Sure, Joe. I'm sorry, Miss Sally. I didn't mean no harm or nothing. That's all right. Oh, Horace, you silly. Why did you do that? Hey, you really didn't mean anything by it, Horace. Yeah, I just want to talk to you, that's all. Hey, you are. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't even hear me. I wanted to buy a drink. Oh, sure, coming right up. Not for me, her. 
What are you talking about? I wanted to buy her a drink. And she wouldn't even listen. She wouldn't pay any attention. Well, that's her choice, mister. If she doesn't want a drink with you, that's the way it's going to be. Now, are you going to pay for that drink? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to drink this one, too. Well, give me another one. nice out here. Mm-hmm. Hey, have I told you lately that I love you? 103 times. But don't stop now. Oh, I'm never gonna stop. Joe, that's Horace. He's sick or hurt. Oh, I don't think so. Oh. Hey, Horace, looks like you're having a pretty rough night. Oh, Horace, look at you. Horace, I'm ashamed of you. I never thought I'd see you in that condition. Hey, come on, Horace, let me give you a hand. Yeah, I'll be all. You keep away from me! Horace! I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize to me, Horace. No, not to you. Sally, I got to apologize to Sally. Well, whatever it is, it can wait until morning. Yeah. I got to apologize to Sally. Yes, that's right. You go right on up to bed, Horace. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Joe, what got into him? But we forget about him. But I've never seen him act like that before. He was almost like an animal. Oh, he's not used to being drunk, that's all. Not used to having you see him in that condition. But why should he care what I think? Because he's in love with you, that's why. Oh, Joe, not Horace. Well, of course he is. Why do you think he came to your defense at the dance? Why do you think he's always looking at you the way he does? But I've... I've never done anything to encourage him. I know you haven't. Forget about him. He'll sober up and he'll be all right tomorrow. Besides, I can't blame him for falling in love with you. I fell in love with you, didn't I? Sally, I want to apologize. I wouldn't hurt you for the world. I wouldn't hurt you. I wouldn't hurt you. At all. I apologize.
Yes, who is it? It's me. Horace. Please, Sally, I have to see you. You shouldn't be here, Horace. What would Daddy say? I want to apologize. Uh, Sally, I wouldn't embarrass you for anything. Oh, Horace. No, if, if you just knew how I feel. Every, every day and every minute is a... I don't want to hear it, Horace. Don't say another word. Just go home. Well, you, you, you must know how I feel, because at the bank you're standing so close to me every day. And the way you look at me. Horace, I was just being friendly. It never meant any more than that. I love you, Sally. I have from the very first minute. Go home, or I'll call Daddy. Now, see, I can talk to you now. For the first time. And I, I, I know what I want to say. And you got to listen to me. Shh. Sally, what's going on down there? Horace, I'll scream. No, no, don't, don't scream. Uh, don't. Oh, please, uh, don't. Uh, don't. Don't, don't. Mine in the store. I went for some coffee. You got any objections? No, I don't have any objections, but what happens if somebody walks in and steals the place while he's gone? Where's Roy? He went to Carson City. Carson City, my pa's best friend, and he's gone when I need him the most. What's the matter? You rob a bank or something? No, I didn't rob a bank. I'm getting married. I wanted to invite Roy to the wedding. Well, I guess it won't hurt you to wait a couple days, will it? Mr. Bristol, what's the matter? Clem. She's dead. What are you talking about, Mr. Bristol? My Sally. She's dead. You have this, Mr. Bristol. Good, strong cup of tea. Who? Do a thing like this. We'll find who did it, Mr. Bristol. We'll find him. Joe. Joe, listen to me. Are you sure you've told us everything? Look, Joe, I don't like doing this to you. I'm just trying to narrow it down. The time element clears you. When Mr. Bristol found Sally, you were in the office talking to me. I, I just want to know if you can help in any way. I'm sorry. There'll be time for this tomorrow. I'll be leaving now, Mr. Bristol. You better get some rest. Clem, who'd do a thing like this? We'll find him. You get some rest. He's right, Mr. Bristol. Here, now you drink this tea, and then you try to get some rest. And just you remember. I'm right across the street if you need anything. Anything. You're very kind. I think it's best if he's just left alone for a while. Oh, I just can't believe it. I just can't. Lovely girl like that. Oh, I'm... I'm afraid of what this is going to do to Horace. Working with her the way he did. He was so fond of her. And she was so kind to him. Oh, poor, poor Horace. Good night, Mr. Bristol. Joe. Horace. He just might. Joe, what? 
Can I talk to Horace? But he's fast asleep upstairs. Joe, what's this all about? Now wait just a moment. Horace. Horace, come on, wake up. What? Wake up. What? what? Sally is dead. What are, you, what are you talking about? Sally is dead. Do you know anything about it? No, of course he doesn't. Joe, what are you getting at? He was on the street tonight. He might know something. I, I, I didn't do anything, did I? Huh? What do you mean you didn't do anything? Well, don't you know, Horace? Were you too drunk to know? I'm not used to drinking that much. I didn't even take off my clothes. Oh, Horace, listen. I, I won't have you persecuting this boy this way. Look, I'm not persecuting him. I'm trying to get some answers. You just slow down. You're just imagining things. Well, Horace was right here in this room when this terrible thing happened. I, I talked to him when he came in. He could have gone out again. He couldn't have without me hearing him. You heard what Mrs. Cutler said. Horace couldn't have had anything to do with it. He was right here all the time. You come with me. How could they even think you could do such a terrible thing? No, no, I'd never hurt myself. Of course you wouldn't. Mm -mm. No. 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 I still can't believe it, Ben. Even now, I can't believe it. I know. Something we... We could do to help. How would you like to come out to the ranch for a couple of days? Thanks, Ben. Joe, this was her Bible. She'd want you to have it. Just lock yourself up like this. Oh, I know how you feel. Well, those people down there, they, they keep looking at me. They keep watching this window. Poor boy, you poor, poor boy. What they're putting you through. Why do they think I killed her? Well, don't pay any attention to them. They can't hurt you. You know you're innocent, and so do I. Dinner get all cold. Little Joe not come in yet? You keep something warm for him, I'll sing. I'll talk to him. All right, Mr. Ben. 
Pop Singh feel very sorry for little Joe. I wish there was something we could do. I think it's been done. Dumbest question half the people in town. Taking depositions from Horace and Mrs. Cutler. She backs him to the hilt. It's like he's in the days of constant hammering. There's just some way we could reach him. I know. Huh? Got Hop Singh keeping some warm food for you. I don't want anything, Pop. Joe, I just can't stand by and watch you tear yourself apart this way. He knows something, Bob. I'm sure he does. Maybe he even killed for himself. Joseph, you mustn't say a thing like that. You mustn't. Mrs. Cutler swore an affidavit that he was in his room. She could have been wrong. She could have been asleep. It was late. What reason would Horace have had to do such a thing? I don't know. I don't know, but you didn't see him that night. It's just the way I feel. The way you feel? You, you accuse him of... because of the way you feel? You realize that if you weren't in the sheriff's office when this thing happened, you might have been a suspect yourself? You'd have been accused yourself of this thing? On the same kind of circumstantial evidence that you're, that you're trying to build up against Horace? So that's why we have laws. And the law says a man is innocent until he's proven guilty beyond the shadow of a doubt. That's what justice is about. Son. I know the feeling of grief. The loss of someone you love. I know it very well. You'll come on the house. Have something to eat. You have to have food. No, Pa. I don't have to have food. he was picked up for the murder of a girl over in Mason City. Yeah, that's a lie! That's a lie! Oh. He was picked up along with a dozen others, and he was turned loose. Yeah, and you've turned him loose again. Well. Hey, Joe! We're with you, Joe. We got the evidence we need. Horace was picked up over a year ago for killing a girl over in Mason City. What's he talking about, Clem? Horace was picked up all right back in Mason City, but there wasn't a shred of evidence to hold him on. He was questioned, Joe, that's all. Just like I questioned you. You gonna lynch a man for that? Clem's right, Cliff. This isn't doing anybody any good. Joe, we... 
We all know how you felt about Sally. We're just trying to help you. I know you are, Cliff, and thanks. Best way you can help me now is to go home. Look, all of you, I know how you feel. I'm the one who's most concerned, and I'm asking you to go on home. Please. Took a long ride for nothing, don't it, Paul? Sure does. I don't know why we were so worried. Well, we got work to do. Yeah. That was a good job you did. I'm proud of you. Yeah, well, don't be too proud of me, Clint. I just didn't want to see him get lynched, that's all. That way, there'd always be a doubt. As soon as I know Horace is the one for sure, I'll see he gets what's coming to him. Somewhere, Horace? I'm talking to you, Horace. No bedroll, clothes. Looks like you're running out. This is the way you left Mason City? That's none of your business. When I stopped Cliff and his friends, I made it my business, Horace. You're not gonna run out on me. I said you're not running out. We're gonna go down and talk to the deputy. I got some explaining to do. Sam, take his horse. Here's your You still trying to do my job for me, Joe? He was leaving town. What about it? I can't hold a man with an ironclad alibi. You mean you're just gonna let him leave? That's right. He asked me, and I told him he could go on back to Mason City. Go on, Horace. Scared bank clerk. Doesn't look like any killer I ever saw. How many times do I have to tell you that scared bank clerk acted like a madman the night Sally was killed? I know you've told me, but nobody else saw it. Oh, just so. Look, Joe, I'm doing every single thing I can. I've questioned half the people in this town, and sooner or later I'll find out who did it. Second time you did that, Horace.
Where did you come from? Driving right behind you, Horace. So I wasn't going to follow you at first. Until you made that wrong turn to Twin Forks. It's none of your business where I go. She said you were going to Mason City, Horace. Mason City's in the opposite direction. How come you changed your mind? I told you, it's none of your business. Well, you're not afraid to go to Mason City, are you? I just changed my mind, that's all. Yeah, but why? Why'd you change your mind, Horace? Well, you didn't kill that girl in Mason City, did you? I mean, you were one of the suspects. Ever find the man to kill that girl? How should I know? Hmm. Just thought you might know, that's all. It's funny. Girls killed in Mason City. Sheriff questions you, lets you go, and you leave town. And Sally's killed, and Clem questions you and lets you go. And here you are on the road again. Kind of begins to, to make a picture, doesn't it? Now, why don't you leave me alone? Yeah, I guess you'd like me to leave you alone, wouldn't you? All right, I'll do it. I'll leave you alone. On one condition. You and I ride to Mason City. Now, if they found the man that killed that girl, I'll let you go on your way. But if they haven't found her, I'll stay with you, Horace. No matter how far you go, no matter how long it takes, I'll be right behind you. Until you tell me you killed Sally. So you better get used to having me around, Horace. All right, you can leave me alone! Joe, what are you doing here? I want you to give Horace a message for me. Horace? He isn't here. You just tell him I'm still right behind him. You tell him nothing's changed. How can I give Horace a message? I tell you, he isn't here. He went to Mason City five days ago. Everyone knows that. He's not in Mason City, Mrs. Cutler. He's right here in your house. He is not. Joe Cartwright, now wait just a minute here. I told you, 
he wasn't here. Unlock the door. Well, he isn't locked. It can't be. You came home. I didn't know you were here. Don't let him near me. He's been hounding me every minute. Hounding an innocent boy, smashing up my house. What's the matter with you? It looks like you made a mistake, Mrs. Cutler. A mistake? I don't even know what you're talking about. You didn't hear him come in. Maybe you didn't hear him the night Sally was killed. Horace didn't leave the house that night. I know he didn't. He was right here in this room. You were wrong just now. You could have been wrong then. I know Horace as well as I knew my own son. He's the last person in the world who would want to harm Sally. No, no, I won't let you touch him. I won't let you. No! Come on, Horace. There's no more room. Come on, sit in that chair. Horace, Horace, did he hurt you? Now, for the last time, will you leave him alone? We were talking about mistakes, Mrs. Cutler. There wasn't any mistake. You're he sure? was in his room. You're sure I'm of that? I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure. Well, what about just now? You didn't even know he was in the house. Now, why are you trying so hard to protect him? Why? Because he has no one else. <sighs> no one else in all the world. He came here hurt and alone. And I gave him what he needed, a mother's love. But you wouldn't understand that, would you, Joe Cartwright? You've always had more love than you needed. Your pa and your brothers. You wouldn't know what it's like to be alone and hurt. But I know what it's like, just like Horace does. <laughs> I've lived with it day after day, week after week, ever since my Jimmy died. I knew your son, Mrs. Cutler. And Horace is nothing like him. Yes, he is! He's the same age, he's the same sweet, shy kind of boy that my Jimmy was. My Jimmy was always shy with girls, just the way Horace is. Sally was the only girl that Horace ever had. And you took even that well, away come from on, Mrs. him. Mrs. Cutler, Sally was never his girl. You know it, and so does Horace. She would have been if you didn't get in the way. Sally liked me. And she liked me very much. She could never like anybody like you, Horace. Yes, she did. She did. You ever take a look at yourself in the mirror, yeah. Horace? No, wait, wait. Take a look at yourself. Go on, look in the mirror, Horace. You're funny, Horace. Remember that night? Oh, you were funny that night. When you came stumbling down the street, falling in the dirt. Yes, Sally thought you looked real funny. No, stop it! Stop it! And how about at the dance? And what a fool you made of yourself at the dance. Yeah, if I hadn't stopped Cliff, he would have broken you in two. You know, Sally and I laughed about that. Stop it! Stop stay out of this! Stop torturing him! I told you to stay out! Stop oh, it! I laughed at you a lot, Horace. Oh, no! No! Take a look at him now, Mrs. Cutler! Is that your son? Is that your daddy? Like you killed Sally! I didn't mean to do it! She was gonna scream. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. Uh, was a mistake. Uh. I don't believe it. I didn't want to believe it. I thought he was like my Jimmy. Don't leave me. Understand, Horace. I'll be near. And I'll help you. I'm sorry, Mrs. Cutler. 
Let's go to the sheriff. boy like that. Who knows what goes on in a man's mind? How true. George, then offer for you to come out to the ranch and stay with us a while still stands. Thanks, Ben. Joe. When I first found out Horace was the one, I... I wanted to kill him. Now all I can feel for him is pity. Let's go. Move slow and comb behind every rock. He's got a bullet in him. He can't be too far. And remember, a rat is dangerous when he's cornered. I know how to deal with rats. I'll drag him in on the end of this. Hartley, I'm going to tell you once more, this is a posse, not a lynch mob. This is a band of madmen we've been chasing. They've killed, pillaged, burned me out. They killed my wife. Cap Fenner and his band are going to get no better from us than, than they've been given. And you can call this a posse if you want to, but we're going to shoot on sight and we're going to shoot to kill. I just hope that old friends don't try to get in the way. I just hope that none of them find that wounded man for we do. The following program is rated PG. Parental guidance is recommended for people under 15 years. and comb behind every rock. He's got a bullet in him. He can't be too far. And remember, a rat is dangerous when he's cornered. I know how to deal with rats. I'll drag him in on the end of this. Hartley, I'm going to tell you once more, this is a posse, not a lynch mob. This is a band of madmen we've been chasing. 
They killed, pillaged, burned me out. They killed my wife. Well, Cap Fenner and his band are going to get no better from us than, the, than they've been given. And you can call this a posse if you want to, but we're going to shoot on sight and we're going to shoot to kill. I just hope that, that old friends don't try to get in the way. I don't like it, Ben. I just hope that none of them find that wounded man for we do. I'll catch up with the others. Cap Fanner's coming, Jarrah. He's the one who had the money. I'll saddle a horse and take him into town. No, no, no. He stays here. I want you to go to town and tell Roy Coffey to bring the doctor out here. Tell him to come out Prado. Make sure you don't tell anybody about this except Roy. You understand? I know. Wait a minute. What's this all about? No, just do as I tell you. I don't want to argue about it, Joe. Look, you don't want to argue about it, but I do. And we both knew Jim Hartley's wife. I got a friend right now in town with a bullet in him. Maybe dying. You're worried about taking Joseph, care of this. Joseph, I just told you to do something. Get into town. Tell Roy to bring the doctor out here. Do you understand? Now move. Mosquito, I ought to yank you off that horse and beat your head against a rock. How'd you let him get away from you? They shot Amigo's horse out from under him and put a bullet in him. He was dragging himself along the ground. Yeah, dragging the money with him, too. I'll track him, Captain. I don't care what happens to that <laughs> dirty peon. I just want to know where the money is. I'll find out, Captain, and I promise you that. I don't want your promises. I want the money. And don't bother to get back here until you find out where it is. Understand? Yes, sir. Now ride. <laughs> in pretty bad shape, but I've done all I can do for now. I still don't like covering up this sort of thing. You'd rather see that posse bring him in face down over his saddle with That's you. your responsibility. Look, Doc, all Roy's trying to do is buy time for the mob to cool down. Well, I hope you're right. But I won't guarantee how the voters will react when they find out about it, or for that matter, some of my patients when they find out. You try moving him out of here, you'll find out that some of your patients and some of your voters may get killed. Doc, is it all right if I talk to him now? Go ahead. It's all right with me. 
What's your name, son? Hey. What's your name? Why do you waste time? Why don't you kill me? Ain't nobody gonna kill you, boy. Now just tell me what your name is. They call me amigo. What are you going to do with me, Sheriff? Well, that'll be up to the court to decide. <laughs> the court? I'm a Mexican. Yaqui Indian. What court is there for me? Well, let me just say this. If you tell us where Cap Fenner and the rest of his men are, it'd be a mighty big help to you. I do not turn on my friends, senor. You're wasting your time, Roy. Men, regardless of what I think of him, he's still a patient. I've got to get some food into him. I'll get up soon. I'll be right down, Ben. Now you think over what I told you here. Then I shouldn't risk taking this money out of town. Would you keep it in that safe of yours for me for a couple days? Yeah, I don't see why not. Yeah, I handcuffed the kid to the bed upstairs. There's the keys. How's your friend? He's badly hurt, but he'll pull through. Good, just so he lives long enough to hang. You're beginning to sound as bloodthirsty as Hartley. Or maybe that's because I feel the same way Hartley does. Do you mean that you'd turn that boy over to a lynch mob? Yeah, why not? Why not, Roy? It'll save us the bother of a trial. The verdict's already in. The man rode with Cap Fenner. He was involved in the killing of Hartley's wife. The shooting of Jack Marshall and robbery. What more do you want? Look, nobody questions the fact that it deserves a hanging. But if a man is hanged without the benefit of a trial, whoever puts the rope around his neck is guilty of murder. I say, give him what he deserves. I don't care what the man deserves. We're not talking about that. It's still murder. Now, if you want to put a rope around his neck, go ahead. If you want to live with a murder on your conscience for the rest of your life, fine. Go right ahead. Look, Joe. Take some food up to him, will you? And stand guard. Uh, cook made you some soup. How is it you bring it? You who hate me. If I said bring it, so I bring it. Hey. I heard what you said about me downstairs. Yeah, well, then you also heard a good friend of mine got shot in that holdup. Now, just how do you think I ought to feel about you? I did not shoot him. Yeah, I figured you'd say that. My people say the son is in the father's image. Sometimes nature makes mistakes. You have a good father. And this is a fine house. Uh, like those of the hacendados in my country. Only there I slept in the stables. With the animal. Where you would have me now or on the filthy floor of the local calabozo, staring through the bars at the gallows. You're here, aren't you? I am here, see. But not because of you. I know you, young senorito. Come on, come on, take it easy. Just make the arm worse. Cuidado, be careful. Animals like me can bite. That is what you think. Uh, I'm a dirty Mexican animal. Do you ever stop to think maybe that's the way you want me to see you? <laughs> <laughs> well, how can I be otherwise? 
Because you are the young patron. And I... I have known hunger and cold. I've been whipped in jail. I have become a thief and a murderer, just as you say. Oh, you really bleed, don't you? Now, you really bleed, not just from your arm. <sighs> what do you think? You're the only man who's ever had hard times, the only one who's ever known hunger and cold? Well, I got news for you, friend. I've known a lot of men like that. But they didn't join up with a killer like Cap Fenner. Perhaps there was a... If there was no place else to go. Joe Benton's ranch here last night. Burned the house and the barn right down to the ground. Now, where were you? I was chasing Fenner. All by yourself, Roy. Now, what are you getting at? I'll tell you what we're getting at. My wife and daughter had to hide in that brush out there for over an hour till Fenner and his cutthroats decided to leave. Then Hartley and the boys and me came up, and my wife and my daughter's hands and arms were burned. We brought her into town to see if Doc could patch her up, but he wasn't here. He was with you. The two of you were seen riding out together. Where'd you go, Roy? Who was Doc patching up? That common sheriff that's got a bullet in him. The one that we couldn't find. You're hiding him, Roy. I'm doing my job. And that's all I'm going to tell you. We'll find out where he went. When we do, we're going to hang that common sheriff. We're going to come back and talk to you. All right, let's get out of here. Anything any better? Does it matter, senor? Amigo, I'm going to make you one promise. You're going to have a fair trial. Now, I intend... Senor, there's something you can do for me now. Those wild horses you round up for your ranch, they are hard to break, see? Yes, they're hard to break. What about them? What happens when you cannot break one? You shoot him. No, sometimes you shoot him. I prefer to set him free. Senor Cartwright, does a man have no more right than a horse? Has he less right to live and be free, respected? Yes, every man has a right to that. And you can help me, senor. Let me go. That horse hasn't broken the law. You have. Now, I'm not judge and jury. What you're asking me to do is impossible. You are judge and jury here. And you have just condemned me to die. Pa, Hartley and the posse are just riding in. Stay here with them. Yeah. Yeah, you are happy now, senor. We want to talk to you, Ben. All right. I'm listening. Well, it, uh... It seems the sheriff and the doc went riding last night. When we did some tracking, we figured that they, uh, they came here. We want to know who's sick in your house, Ben. <laughs> Hardly, I... I don't think I have to account to you for... 
who's sick in my house. You don't have to, Ben. Or you don't want to. <clears throat> now you have something to say, you go right ahead and say it. Unless I got things to do. Like taking care of a wounded common chero, maybe? Sheriff Coffee wants to question me, I'll talk to him. We're gonna look around your place, Ben. Turn me over to them, aren't you? Go on, get out the door. I said, get out the door! You can't stand us all off, Ben. And we're gonna search this place. Starting with that house. Well, I sure wish you wouldn't do that. It's, see, somebody's liable to get hurt. I wouldn't want that to happen. Neither would you. Get a search warrant. I got one right here. I told you about old friends trying to get in the way, Ben. And there's only one of you and a whole lot of us. You better get out of the way. Who's going to get it first, Hartley? Fa. Go on, let them in if that's what they want. Look, I know how you feel about men taking the law in their own hands, but we got nothing to hide. Make up your mind, Ben. All right, let's go. All right, look in there. Still gonna take a look around the barn and the bunkhouse. All right, let's go. What'd you do with them? I kicked them out the back door. You kicked them out the back, just like that? Yeah, just like that. That posse would have killed you to get to him. I didn't figure his life was worth yours. Joe, we're talking about a man's life. We gotta get him back here. I tried, Captain. There were posses everywhere. Twice I almost got shot out of the saddle. But you did find his horse. Sure. Horse was dead. But he could steal another one. I told you to find him. Captain, that amigo ran with the money. Consuelo. Where's my dinner? Coming, Capitan, pronto. I told you not to come back here without him and the money. Captain, there were half a dozen posses around. I could have caught Amigo, but if I tried to catch up with them, they'd have strung us both up. You're a liar. And a fool. And a coward. I make you my lieutenant. Because I thought you were less a pig than the rest of them. But you are even more stupid than they are. Captain, it wasn't me that tied the money bag the wrong saddle. There was a day when I had real men in my command. Soldiers. The finest Virginia ever produced. Men who were proud to follow a dream. Men who fought and died well. Even after the dream, they're gone. We two are proud to ride with you, Captain. <laughs> and now 
now I have the sweepings of the border gutters. The unclean, the filthy, the illiterate. And for a lieutenant, I have a man so stupid, he thinks I do not know a lie when I hear one. Captain, I saw the tracks. I want no tracks. You invented them to cover your mistake. Consuelo. This Consuelo here is Amigo's treasure. He would not run off and leave her. Carson. Yes, Captain. Shoot this fool. It'll be a pleasure. You don't want to kill me, Captain? Captain, you don't mean it. Amigo! 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 Consuelo. Oh, you back. How do you feel? Oh, fine. I... How do you feel? Oh, fine. I... You are wounded. No. Oh. It is nothing. I have had a doctor. Estás seguro? Sí. Amigo. Capitana, I got back as quickly as I could. Amigo. Where's the money? I do not know. I was a prisoner there, then there was a sheriff and a doctor. I... Amigo, you say you were prisoner? Where? Great rancho called De Ponderosa. I've heard of it, Captain. That's the Cartwright spread. It's Cartwright? Is that the man's name who owns the ranch? Say, si, Ben Cartwright. He also has a son named Jose Joseph. Well, Amigo, how did you... How'd you get away? It's Joseph. The posse came to search the house and he pushed me out the back door. Why not give a little surprise party for this Cartwright, eh, Captain? A house burning. Good idea. Por favor, no, Capitan. Senor Cartwright was very kind to me. Had a doctor take care of my arm. He, he gave me food and a clean bed like I have never seen before. before. <laughs> Please don't, don't burn his house. Not getting soft, are you, amigo? No. I do not repay kindness with a torch. Now, amigo, you're going back to the Ponderosa. And you're going to find out where the money is. No, Capitan. They were keeping me for a trial and the gallows. If I go back, I will die. You have my word. They will not take you to trial. But even if I go back, they will not tell me where the money is. You will go back. And you will listen to every word they say. Now, sooner or later, they will talk about the money. Who has it and where it is. When you find out, you drop a white cloth out the window. We'll come for you. Capitan, please don't send my husband back to be killed. Would you come get her out of here? Oh, oh, you make one false move, amigo, and your wife won't live to have that family you're waiting for. Oh, oh, Amigo, we have many knives. Now you go back to the Ponderosa and learn where the money is. I will see that your wife is well cared for. That is, unless you fail me. I will not fail you, Capitan.
can't understand it. Looked every place, no trail, nothing. You must have gotten up into the rocks. Well, as soon as it's daybreak, we'll try again. Sorry, Bob. Worried about you harboring a criminal, I let one go. Go, uh, get some sleep. Life is in danger. You hide very well. My arm, senor. May I go to my room? Gracias. Sorry to disappoint you, senor. Very much, do you, senor? I don't trust you at all. I came back. Oh, sure, you came back. You got a posse out there waiting to hang you. You know, this is the safest place you could be. There are no bars in the windows, but it is still a jail. Soon you will take me to another jail and then to your courts, and after that to the gallows. Oh, come on. Come on, what do you want me to do? Feel sorry for you? You ride with a bunch of killers, you murder, you burn. You're asking for a hanging. What did you expect? When you are hungry, that is bad. But when those you love are hungry, that is worse. I've had too much hunger in my life. And that is why I joined Cap Fenner. He gave me food. So you ride with a killer because he gives you some food? No, and because I have dignity of a job. A job? What, is killing a job? Do you ever think you're getting some honest work? If I were to come to your door asking for work, would you have given it to me? You know my father. What do you think? <sighs> a man can stand so much pain. Only for so long can he stand to see pain come to his loved ones. I want a better life for my son. Your son? No. If this were to be, if I had a son. You told me your people say that a son is made in his father's image. Let's be thankful you don't have a son. Come on, get the cuffs on. What did you do to your hand? Nothing. And we said. How'd you cut it? On a rock. It looks like it was done with a knife. Did not expect you to believe me. A story he told me the other day about cutting his hand. I've seen too many knife wounds. So I figured I'd come back today and have a look around. There's the tracks I followed the other day. They disappear up into the rocks. The tracks of the two horses and the other tracks leading back are fresh. They weren't there the other day. Only one place you could have gone to get a horse. Cap Fenner. Yeah. Cap Fenner. Fan out 
I can move slow and call the wind on the rock. You been keeping those passes busy, Mosquito? Our band will hit in five places at the same time. All right, that's right. You know the next move, Mosquito. Okay, let's go. Here! begins to fit into a pattern. Then it's coming chairs hitting a dozen different places all at the same time. Sheriff's posse is not able to keep up with any of it. And none of the strikes in this immediate area. Now, what do you think, Captain, is trying to draw attention away from the ranch? He's an ex-cavalryman. Sporadic raids to draw the strength away from the main targets. An old cavalry trick. <sighs> Amigo must have got the Fenner's camp. Fenner must have sent him back. For a reason. <laughs> you must think that the money's still here. If Fenner and his men hit us, we're gonna need some help. Yeah, we sure are. Haas must have got the herd up to the North Forks Meadow by now. Joe, why don't you ride up there? Tell Haas to leave as many men as he needs there to keep the herd from scattering. Get back here as quick as you can. All right. On the way back, I'll stop at the lion camps. Get as many men as I can. All right. Keep a good eye on Amigo. I intend to, Joseph. You went up the back way, went up the hill, and you hid there till the posse went away. See, until I was sure they would not come back. Mm -hmm. You know, Joseph went out looking for you. I heard someone. The rabbit who lifts his head to see the hunter often will get a bullet for his trouble. This is not true. You uh, begged me to let you go. And Joseph let you go. And you had a wonderful chance to escape. And you came back. Amigo. I can't help wondering why. Where else could I go, Senor Ben? Who else would give me food and shelter? Now, Joseph went to have another look around after he came back. Found some very interesting tracks. One set of footprints, two sets of hoof prints. Joseph was mistaken. The footprints were leading south. And the hoofprints came up from the south. From the hard rock country. Now, Sheriff Coffey and I think that Finnis Camp is in that area. I think you know exactly where it is. I think that you went to Finnis Camp when you were gone. Uh, you have already made your mind, though. What can I say? The truth. Just say the truth. Now, Sheriff Coffey told you he'd speak up for you at the trial if you'd help us find and capture Fenner. You asked for mercy. Now, here's your chance to earn it. I heard the horse riding away. Joseph is not here. Have you sent him for help? Why, are we going to need help? Is Fenner going to raid the Ponderosa? I have not seen Capitan Fenner. I was not in the camp. Do not ask me! You're really not a very good liar. I was in the camp. Now, where is that camp? Where a man with a knife holds it at the throat of my wife. Even if I tell you where the camp is, it will not help. They're not there now. Where'd they go? To the hills to watch this house. I was to find the hiding place of the money and then drop a white cloth from the window. 
And they've been watching this house ever since you came back. See, if I fail them, the man with the knife will kill Consuelo, my wife, and the child she carries. a prisoner. Get up there and do it. Why are you doing this for me? Get up there and drop that cloth. It is done, Senor Ben. What do we do when Capitan Fenner gets here? I'll give him the money. And you'll uh, all leave. You would do this for me? You will drop your weapon, Mr. Cartwright. I'm Captain John Finner, formerly of the Confederate Army. We captured your son. Oh, he fought well. <laughs> He's a brave lad. But unfortunately, courage does not suffice against a well-set plan. No need to beat him like that. No need. Mr. Cartwright, you're holding certain valuable assets that belong to me. My money, and I want it. You'll have it. But I want your word. And when you get it, you leave here. And no further harm is done, my son. Our amigo's wife. Oh, so you and Mr. Cartwright have been talking, eh, amigo? Did you also tell him what would happen if you failed to locate... The money? Well, well, no, Capitan. I, it was the only way. All right, Mr. Cartwright, we have a bargain. The woman and your son for the money. two outside, both of you, in case somebody happens to come in. Yes, Captain. It's all there. All of it. All right, I kept my bargain. You keep yours. Get them out of here. There was nothing said about you, Mr. Cartwright. You're going with us as our hostage. If no one follows, we'll release you eventually. Now, what about you, amigo? Whose man are you? Cartwright's or mine? Oh. I am your man, Capitan. I made him trust me, so he would tell me where the money is. Well, I swear to you. I give you my word. And you have my word, Mr. Cartwright. You wanted your son for the money. 
you will get your son. But dead. Carson. Capitan. Let me shoot the young senorito. Shoot him? I thought these people are your, your friends. They are not my friends. He tried to use me. He wanted me to tell him where your camp was. No. In his eyes, I am a stupid Mexican peon. Let me shoot him with his own father's gun. Huh? With his own father's gun? Seguro. Yeah. There you go. Huh? Yeah, but only one bullet. Just one bullet. Oh, no. Done with amigo. I have seen you do this with other prisoners, Capitan. I wanted to be like you. <laughs> you stupid, illiterate peon, shoot! <laughs> See me, Capitan. <laughs> lived or died. I never thought there was a, a thing about him that was decent. You know, Joe, it's awful easy to see all the wrong things that the other fellow does. It's a whole lot tougher to why he did him. Man can do an awful lot of good with his life. If he has an even chance, me gonna have had that chance. Well, his child will. I'll see to that. We'll see to that. 